The Dodgers are at it again. Welcome into an emergency edition of Fantasy Baseball today. Maybe not so much an emergency edition. We're going a little bit later than we'd like. On Friday, December 15th, I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White, and we are here to break down a pretty big trade, one that had been rumored since Wednesday. Let's just <laughs> jump right in, Scotty. Tyler Glass now was traded to the Dodgers, who were in desperate need of pitching the full trade. The Dodgers received Tyler Glass now and outfielder Manuel Margot in exchange for Ryan Pepio, who was awesome down the stretch, and outfield prospect Johnny DeLuca. And apparently the deal is contingent upon the Dodgers extending Tyler Glass now as well, who was set to enter the uh, final year of his contract in 2024. But it sounds like that won't be the case. He'll be extending. We don't have any details as of that just yet. But the deal in general, Scott, the Dodgers are doing what the Dodgers do. The Rays are doing what the Rays do. We spoke about Tyler Glass now extensively on our Thursday podcast, looking at your early rankings. And there's no doubt when Glass now pitches, he's one of the best in the game. Among starting pitchers with 120 innings pitched this past season, 12.2K per nine, second best. 25.8% K minus walk rate, second best. 16.5% swinging strike rate, second best. Now, how many innings is he going to give us? We'll have to figure that out on the Dodgers. What do you think? Yeah, it's really a glass half full, glass half now situation here. Um, glass half now. Oh, man, I, I messed it up. I meant to say glass half full, glass half empty situation. Yeah, I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I messed it up. Sorry about that. Um, no, but you you gave some of those stats there. 12.2 K per nine. I know that was second only to uh, Spencer Strider specifically among pitchers with at least 120 innings. And meanwhile, Tyler Glass now was first in XFIP among pitchers with at least 120 innings, beating out Spencer Strider. So pitch for pitch, I would say Tyler Glass now is the closest pitcher to being Spencer Strider, the consensus number one pitcher in fantasy for 2024 but the reason we use that 120 inning threshold is because that's all the innings tyler glass now threw in 2023 and in fact it was a career high for a guy who's 30 and uh that's kind of a problem that's that the repeated injuries for mr tyler glass now uh now i still rank him in the top 10 because I am mostly focused on upside when drafting pitchers in 2024. It's my way of combating the glob, the glob effect that was happening at the position where with all the different rule changes in recent years, there was becoming less differentiation within the pitching ranks and more volatility, uh, extreme highs and lows from start to start. I want to make sure if I'm investing in pitching, I'm getting impact, which Tyler Glass now clearly provides. I don't think value wise his move to the Dodgers changes anything. Of course, the Dodgers are one of the best teams in baseball, but so are the Rays. Uh, they do have Otani to, 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 you know, to bat alongside Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman at the top of the lineup now. So they're going to be a run scoring machine. I guess maybe there's a little more win potential here for Tyler Glass now, but I don't think, I don't think that's worth factoring into your calculations. I, I think there's a clear uh, top seven at what I, I said before I have glass now ninth. I'm eighth right behind the, the obvious top seven. Uh, he's the first beyond them. And um, I think, I think that's where he should remain. If you're like me focused on upside over downside. And just to point out, once again, the top seven starting pitchers in Scott's ranking, Spencer Schreider, Garrett Cole, Kevin Gosman, Zach Wheeler, Corbin Burns, Luis Castillo, Zach Gallen, and then boom, number eight, boom. we do get to Tyler Glass. Now, you pointed out, Scott, he's coming over from a great team, Tampa Bay Rays. They were fourth in run scored last year. The Dodgers were second. So from that perspective, it's not a huge jump up in terms of the run support that he's going to get. Do you worry at all about the environment change? Because according to StatCast, Dodger Stadium is a much better offensive ballpark than in Tampa Bay. And now you might get a few starts in Coors Field. So, you know, it's these things that we're looking at on the fringes. But, you know, over the course of 
if he makes 20, 25 starts, it's things that could matter. Will that factor into your, I guess, ranking or projection for him? Well, first of all, I think it's an upset if he makes 25 starts. You said 20, 25. He's, he's, he's never made 25. Right. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a more home run prolific ballpark. But Tyler Glass now misses so many bats. And just looking at his ground ball rate from 2023, 51%. So he's he's not going to be vulnerable to home runs on contact, the little bit of contact he gives up. So I, I just don't think it's worth in, investing a lot of thought in. It's really just about how many starts is Tyler Glass now going to give you. That, that, that seems like the only factor, uh, given the, his extreme talent, that that's really worth mulling over. I know the Welsh kind of asked you a variation of this question on Thursday's podcast, but just from a roster construction perspective, we're talking constantly about glass now and how long is he going to stay on the field? Would you actually be okay with glass now as your SP one in fantasy, or would you want somebody uh, with a higher innings floor to kind of compliment a Tyler glass now? What do you think about that? I'm I, personally, I'm not worrying about that. I am. I don't want to invest in pitchers who I think are pretty globby, and you could argue exactly where the 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 starting point of the glob is. But again, I'm I'm really selling out for the strikeouts and for the upside and for the impact. If I am investing in a pitcher, uh, trusting that at least in twelve team leagues, at least in leagues shallow enough that there's a waiver wire to speak of. I can backfill with globby pitchers as needed. The glob is vast. That's the whole idea of the glob. Uh, so it's 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 and it's going to keep growing. There are going to be new names emerging, but they they don't give you much of an advantage over the competition. While the the Tyler Glass now types as vol, as as injury prone as they are, as risky as they are, they do they do when they're healthy. So um, you know, I'm just looking at, after the. MVP caliber hitters are gone in the first four rounds or so of a draft. That's when I'm piling up the glass now level pitchers. Doesn't have to be glass now necessarily, but there are others like him that that present that risk reward profile, like Tarek Skubal, Cole Reagans, Freddie Peralta, etc. The early ADP for glass now, by the way, 46.1, according to the NFBC, the ninth starting pitcher off the board. He's going just behind George Kirby, just ahead of Pablo Lopez. And yes, very clearly by Scott's rankings, he is taking Tyler Glass now ahead of both of those pitchers. Let's take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk about the other side of this. Ryan Pepio going over to the Rays, someone we really enjoyed watching down the stretch this past season. Does have some sleeper appeal. We'll talk about that right after this. Wake up to football highlights and news from around the world with the one and only Morning Footy Team. Rise and shine, football fans. Welcome to Morning Footy. Start your all-day football craze with Morning Footy, part of the all-new Galazzo Network. Welcome back in. The big trade, Tyler Glassdow and Manuel Margot headed to the Dodgers in exchange for Ryan Pepio and Johnny DeLuca, who will be going to Tampa Bay, obviously. Ryan Pepio, I think the big get here for the Rays, former top prospect, 26 years old, was awesome down the stretch. Finished with a 214 ERA, a .76 whip. The walks per nine, which control had been a huge issue for Ryan Pepio in his minor league career in 2022. He dropped his walks from 6.7 walks per nine in 2022 down to 1.1 1 .1 in 2023. Will he be able to maintain those gains? That is something that remains to be seen. A three-pitch mix, Scott, mid-90s on the fastball, has a wipeout changeup. I thought this was interesting. StatCast labeled his breaking ball as a slider. Fangraphs has it labeled as a cutter. So maybe it's kind of one of those tighter sliders that's not going to get a ton of whiffs. But uh, do you think there's enough there with the arsenal? Like a, if it's a four-seam cutter changeup, what do you think about uh, Ryan Pepio? We saw it on the stretch and now joining the Tampa Bay Rays. Oh, I definitely think there's enough there. I am very high on Ryan Pepio. You mentioned the con improved control. You you gave the major league numbers uh, when obviously he split his time between the majors, more time in the minors. Uh, 
certainly in 2022. And the combined number, 4.4 walks per nine in 2022, 1.4 walks per nine in 2023. So he took his biggest weakness, did Pepio, and turned it into a strength, was a controlled artist during his time in the majors. Now, he didn't get the big strikeout rate in the majors as, as well as he was pitching. Uh, pitching to a 2.14 ERA in his in his eight appearances, three of them starts, but you know uh, the ones that weren't were like following an opener. As well as he was pitching, he didn't get the big strikeout rate that we saw from him in the minors. But I will point out, Ryan Pepio had 12.2 a, a swinging strike rate of 12.2 percent, which is very good and would suggest there is more swing and miss ability in there. Uh, over and, and I think we'll see it over a larger sample. Uh, and I do think this trade has a chance to put a little Pepio in his Stepio, just killing it with the name puns here, because while the Dodgers, with all their resources, had a chance to bring in a bunch of pitchers to compete with Pepio for playing time, the Rays, with their lack of resources, I mean, they just targeted him as the key piece in the Tyler Glass now deal. So clearly... They like Ryan Pepio, and they're interested in giving him as many starts as possible. And honestly, just the fact that they like him. that What you mentioned at the top of the podcast, the Rays doing what the Rays do. What they do is they, they spin off these impending free agents after they've turned them into stars and get in other players that they can turn into stars uh, before spinning them off before free agency. And, and so that they targeted Pepio for that, I think, it is... All the more reason to believe he's the real deal. He is RP eligible, RP only on CBS Sports Leagues to begin 2024. By the end of April, you know, he'll have starting pitcher eligibility, but something to keep in mind if, if that's uh, a factor for you. But I imagine we're going to see Pepio drafted in the middle to late rounds of every league now if we weren't going to already. And I will be. At the front of the line. The early ADP for Ryan Pepio, 204.4. He's going just after Nathan Avaldi, just ahead of his now teammate, Aaron Savali, which, by the way, spoiler alert, I love Aaron Savali this year, but we have all offseason to talk about that. Uh, what do you think about that? Pepio race? or Savali? Because I'm taking Pepio. I will take Savali. I, I am very mm -hmm. high on him. I think we can get a potential Zach Eflin type outcome from Savali over a full season with Tampa Bay. But, um, for Pepio, what do you think about that price tag just outside the top 200? I like it. Gimme, gimme. Would you rather have Pepio or his now also teammate, Shane Boz, who is going 10 spots higher, returning from Tommy John surgery? Obviously, huge prospect status as well. Not entirely sure what the workload is going to look like and how many innings they give him, but what do you think about Pepio versus Boz? Yeah, I mean, workload is... is uh is is something to consider for Pepio too. 62 yeah. and two thirds is all he threw between the majors and minors in 2023. I'll take boss. There's more upside there. All right. Did want to quickly point out what the uh, rotations are looking like for both of these teams after the trades here. And with the Tampa Bay Rays, we'll start there. We know that they have Zach Eflin up at the top of their rotation. Now that there's no glass now followed by Aaron Savali they have Ryan Pepio in there, Shane Boz, and Zach Littell. That's that's what it looks like as of now. I guess there's a chance, you know, Taj Bradley can overtake a Zach Littell, whatever it might be. Um, and I'm sure Taj Bradley will get his opportunities anyway. There's always injuries and all that kind of stuff. But that's the Tampa Bay rotation. And the updated Dodgers rotation will obviously now feature Tyler Glass now, followed by Walker Bueller, who's coming back from his second Tommy John surgery, Bobby Miller, we had a great rookie season, Emmett Sheehan, who has some sleeper appeal, and Ryan Yarbrough. So I have a feeling, Scott, the Dodgers, they're not done just yet. We know that they're, I think, still in on Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but if they miss out on him, maybe they pivot to a Shota Imanaga, or we've seen them link to, like, Lucas Giolito. That wouldn't surprise me either. So I don't think the Dodgers are done just yet. What about the outfielders in this deal? We know who Manuel Margot is. I think better suited as a fourth outfielder at this point, much better versus left-handed pitching in his career. So probably a short side platoon. If someone gets hurt, maybe he gets everyday playing time at some point. 
Johnny DeLuca, a 25-year-old outfielder, comes over to the Tampa Bay Rays, has put up very solid numbers in the minors. This year, hit 294 with 17 homers, 12 steals, a 956 OPS. Uh, but the outfield for the Rays kind of looks like it's settled, at least for now. They could trade Randy Rosarena. That hasn't happened yet. But they have Randy in left field, Jose Siri in center, Josh Lowe in right with Luke Rayleigh at DH. My guess is DeLuca will be some kind of short side platoon, either with Luke Rayleigh or Josh Lowe, because that's what the Tampa Bay Rays do. Yes, um, I, I am a little disappointed, I will say, that the team who had Paul LaDuca all those years now no longer has Johnny DeLuca. <laughs> so that is a little disappointing that that breakup happened. But I, I, that was my initial reaction when I heard the, the Rays were acquiring Johnny DeLuca is that, uh, okay, this is, this is another thing the Rays do. They get these platoon bats and, and go heavy on that because uh, one thing Johnny DeLuca has done throughout his minor league career is just kill lefties. And so that my memory from researching him last year, you know, he got called up uh, during the summer with the Dodgers was that uh, this is probably a platoon bat long term. So it makes sense that he lands with the Rays. Uh, part of the reason he crushed lefties is he's a former switch hitter who who has become a full-time right-handed hitter. So he, those righty on righty looks were something he was less exposed to. But he really upped his game against right-handers in the minors this past year. In fact, ended up with better numbers against them than against lefties for that one year. And so maybe there is a chance for him to break through as a more uh, uh, as somebody who can play every day for the Rays. Now, since that isn't their MO, that's not what I'm betting on to start out. But it, it, there's a better chance of it happening with them, uh, given that they are always looking for cheap options. A better chance of it happening with them than some other organization. Uh, especially, maybe you know, maybe they trade Randy or Rosarena at some point and they have an outfield opening. And somebody to keep an eye on, something to... Uh, a name to keep in the back of your mind, uh, somebody to monitor this spring, because the minor league numbers look good for Johnny DeLuca with power and speed and on-base ability. And while well, I do think it's an upset that... It would be an upset if he became a full-time player in 2024. I do think it's a possibility. And if it does happen, it's because Johnny DeLuca forced the issue. All right, let's wrap up with this uh, smaller signing, not nearly as exciting, I guess, uh, as the Tyler Glass now trade. The Tigers signed a signed Jack Flaherty to a one-year $14 million deal, very similar to the deal that Luis Severino got with the Mets. Uh, kind of that one-year prove-it deal, see if they can bounce back and, and get themselves back on the market next year, looking for a multi-year deal at that point, hopefully. Jack Flaherty is now 28 years old, uh, and since the start of 2022, he has thrown 180 and a third innings. 484 ERA, a 159 whip, just over a strikeout per inning, 4.4 walks per nine. So has not been himself for a couple of years now. This is not the Jack Flaherty we remember from 2019 and 20. I think even before that, right? 2018, 2019, when he looked like an ace for years to come. Uh, I think the bigger takeaway for this trade, this signing, Scott, is that it likely takes Reese Olsen and now Sawyer Gibson Long out of the rotation because the Tigers signed Kenta Maeda. Uh, and as of now, it looks like their rotation will be Tarek Skubal, Flaherty, Maeda, Casey Mines, and Matt Manning. Those last two, I've dealt with a bunch of injuries, so obviously things can change very quickly. Uh, but... Might have to cool the brakes a little bit on uh, Reese Olsen and Sawyer Gibson Long as a result. Oh, I don't know. I, I imagine that'll be a competition. I, I think the only locks for the rotation are Scooble, Maeda, and Flaherty, myself. Uh, but it but it is, there's there's more of a crowd there now, so yet you can't just presume that any of them are going to have a spot. In particular, I think Reese Olsen earned his 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 spot but you know it'll it'll all play out this spring none of them deserve more than a late round look i i don't think any of them is can't miss for upside certainly not matt manning or casey mize uh mize mize is coming back from tommy john surgery right so we don't even know exactly where he'll be in that process 
So I wouldn't write off Reese Olsen and Sawyer Gibson Long, but but yeah, you can't just assume they're going to have that spot. As for Flaherty, uh, I know uh, one of the beat writers for the Detroit Free Press said, th this is what he tweeted out, Evan, sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Evan Petzold of the Detroit Free Press said, I'm told the Tigers showed interest in Jack Flaherty throughout the offseason and believe pitching coach and believe the pitching coaches can maximize his potential. Chris Fetter and Robin Lund have a track record of helping pitchers improve. So he doesn't go into a lot of details about what they're planning to do with Flaherty, but it is notable that throughout his injuries and his uh, statistical drop-off, Flaherty has held his velocity pretty well. So there there may be a chance to uh, to rehabilitate him from a performance perspective. Not many better places than used to pitch in than Comerica Park, which will also help. I would go for any, you know, I would I would go for a Reese Olsen over a Jack Flaherty on draft day. I'm not saying he's deserving of a lot of capital, draft capital. But I am saying there's a chance. So if he starts uh, turning heads this spring, maybe he will move up draft boards. Jack Flaherty's early ADP is just inside the top 400. So for those doing very... Uh, deep leagues drafting this early in the offseason. And there's some draft and hold formats where you have to draft 50 rounds worth of players. So obviously, somebody like Jack Flaherty will be worth drafting there. And he's a name to pay attention to, like you said, Scott, throughout spring training. Did want to quickly wrap up with, uh, we did get some breaking news here from Jeff Passan regarding the extension that Tyler Glass now will sign with the Dodgers. Five years, $135 million. So, Good for Tyler Glass now. Big deal for him, making big money. Can he stay on the field? I think that's obviously always the biggest question with Glass now. And I don't know if you mentioned at the top of the show, but the, the trade wasn't going to be final, final until he accepted an extension. It was it was contingent yeah. on that. Sounded like that was inevitable, but now it's official. So uh, I think we can for sure now close the book on this Tyler Glass now, Ryan Pepio and others deal five years 135 million and uh, we'll see him in a dodgers uniform we'll be seeing him in a dodgers uniform for a while and let's see where they go from here because again i do not think the dodgers are done just yet for scott i am frank thanks as always for tuning in to fantasy baseball today please make sure to follow and leave a five-star rating on apple or spotify if you're checking us out live on youtube if you haven't subscribed yet please do that as well we do appreciate it and we'll be back again next week Bye-bye.